greeted with this morning and I just want you to know that there's a big question mark around why because I don't know why now we slept in my husband's room last night because my son usually sleeps with him on a mattress beside him so I said to him my son I'll sleep in the room with you watch the end of the movie that we were watching the night before and we can fall asleep there. So when my husband gets home, what I do is I normally go out of the, get out of his bed. Yes, his bed, because we don't sleep together. His bed and, oh shit, it's cold. And I'm in pain. I get out of his bed. But this morning, the weirdest thing I don't know whether I dreamt it or what, but he goes under, he's like whispering in a deep voice, fuck off. And I, and I mean, I had just woken up, because I only come in the door and get changed for bed. And I heard this, fuck off. I don't know whether it was him really saying for me to fuck off. And if it was, which I'm sure it wasn't, I don't know why. This really concerns me. And I've all taken another quarter of Valium too because it's the morning time. It's since 8.30 last night. I haven't had one. I was splitting a headache. That's probably all this medication I take. I'm probably slurring. You know, I just, I'm just sick of coming on here, YouTube, and I'm sick of showing you my slurriness. It's almost like I'm, well, I am just stoned. I'm so sick of it. I hate it. I just want all myself to be fixed. I don't want this pain anymore. But don't get me wrong. Anyone out there who's thinking, who's thinking that I'm suicidal, I'm not, I'm not suicidal at all. And I reassured my friend that yesterday and I'm very careful with what I take. I do definitely take a quarter of a medication, Valium, and I'm going to soon hand over my medication box to my daughter so she can then get it all out for me each time, but only one dose at a time because I'm so scared of mucking it up. I'm scared of overdosing. I, mean, I can't do much overdosing on even a half a tablet, but I just don't want to chance it. So that's where I'm at this morning. I'm all rugged up. It's freezing cold here on the GC. But look. Blue skies all the way, no clouds. All right, I've got to go in and help my son get ready for school now. At least I can do that. So... All right, until later, which probably won't be until either I'm in bed or we'll see. Talk to you soon, YouTubers. Bye for now. I'm back, and I'm only back real quickly while my son's upstairs getting his teeth cleaned. And he's on his nut for school, but it's really troubling why I heard this fuck off. I, I mean, he's clearly got the... He's clearly cranky with me. And sometimes when he gets mad, he thinks I'm Satan. He, and he says that because of my upbringing, my parents, the way they brought me up. When I don't think, I mean, I was molested, but not by my parents, by my brother's best mate, but that was all. So I don't know why he would have told me to fuck off. Maybe, I don't know. He's not himself, obviously. I don't know why he would have. And I just can't deal with this at the time, so I'm going to switch off again before I start tearing up and really cry because I can't deal with this. 
All right, I'm gonna help my pack my lunches, my, my, my son's lunch. I can hear him cleaning his teeth, teeth now. It's only five to eight, so there's no hurry. But I will ask his sister, Lauren, to take him to school, because I clearly can't drive. And this is probably the residual leftover of Valium. I took a quarter last night as well. But I think it might be building up in my system quite clearly because I didn't feel quite this way yesterday after I took it. I lie, I did feel this way actually. Yes, I did. And I slept the whole night, which was great, except for when I woke up to a fuck off in the morning. See, we don't, we've, we haven't slept with each other for such a long time and the excuse for not sleeping together for a long time is he farts and snores and I fart apparently. So when I fart, that distracts him because of my smell and he snores. So I don't worry about the farting. It was just a snoring from my side. And even my son complains about his snoring so he'll come and creep into my bed sometimes and his father will get angry with him because he's done it but I'll intervene and I'll say Alex sorry I don't mean to mention his name um Bill um he slipped into my bed slipped into my bed because um you were snoring and you need to sleep just as much as he does so all right I will be back soon but I forgot to mention that and not mention it I'm just spaced out and that's troubling me. So I've got to send my big sister another message because she's worried about me also, so I'll send her one now. So, okay, I'll be back soon. See you then, YouTubers. I'm back in bed. Sorry for a really dry mouth. I'll try and fix out for the next video. Lauren has dropped her brother to school. She didn't look very happy. As a matter of fact, her eyes looked as though she'd been crying. And the trouble is with Ren is she won't talk to you. She won't talk to me. And I think it's, I think she, she does need a psychiatrist, not a psychiatrist, a psychologist to actually talk to. She, has only done that as a teenager and she did that because we were fighting so bad. She ended up moving into a grandma's and Anna's, which I hated, but she did. That was when Alex and I got back together and I had a massive breakdown. But she woke up this morning and she looked like, sorry, I'm so groggy. I had to take a quarter of a Valium because I'm just, I'm in pain. I'm in such bad pain. But you can't tell the neurosurgeons this because they read what's in front of them and it's not bad enough to warrant an operation, which is great. Don't give me one. That's great news. Fantastic. But I'm having one anyway. It's called bariatric surgery. And that'll be five incisions around the umbilical area, your belly button area for those layman terms, which I usually use. So around the belly, so I'm having surgery anyway, so. But the private neurosurgeon that actually I've seen is um, Dr. Ellison Stevenson. She works here on the Gold Coast and she's a fabulous doctor. She's a friend of my GPs and that's all I need to say. I trust Dr. Gillian with my life. But I do need to make an appointment to see her because I just can't keep living like this. How can anyone live like this? Honestly. Sorry, I don't have all this, but it's just my mouth is so dry. So look, all I wanted to come on to, to say this morning was that my daughter didn't look happy. And I think that's because I can't, I can't do anything in my state of mind and I feel so bad, but then I, look at Bambi. Not a trouble in the world. I wish I was her sometimes, 
So then I don't wish I was her because she's got such a small lifespan. I want Lauren to get better mentally. I know she's hurting at the moment. I mean, she's got a father who doesn't even show her any love. My mum. And I've spoken to him before about how she feels about him. I don't know. What else can someone do? I have to go now. I'll speak to you again soon. I'll be back. Bye. Hey, guess what? I'm back. And my mouth is no longer dry. Although I should put some sort of lip balm on, which I will surely. And yes, I do have clothes on, so sorry about that. Just wanted to come on and chat a little bit more about my daughter, that's all. It's so hard for me to do things like, for example, a tax return, because it's tax return time here in Australia. As of the 1st of July, you claim your taxes back for the following year, but the thing is, I can't do hers because it won't let me in to a certain point of the actual site. I feel very guilty that I can't do it. The thing is, I'm sure even you, a stranger out there, can see where I'm like. I've never been this bad before. And yet, doctors tell me that I'm no worse than what I was 12 months ago. Ha, 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 ha. That's so funny. But I didn't come on here to talk about neurosurgeons. I came on here to talk about Lauren, my daughter. Sorry, I do have a big face now, don't I? <laughs> But I get what Casey Neistat says about his glass and he feels like he's going cross-eyed and I, I feel like I am too, but I feel I'm to blame because she's got no money. That's because I couldn't finish her tax off. I, I can't even tell her how sorry I am because she'd probably slam the door in for me. I mean, she's like that. And I don't want to make her out to be a bad person because she's not. Look at what she's doing for me. She's doing a hell of a lot for me. So she's not a bad person. I'm falling asleep now, so I think I'm going to have to go until next time. I'll see you again later. Bye for now. Hey, everyone. Wow, what an afternoon I've had. And all in the space of probably 15, 20 minutes. Wake up. And reminded my daughter that she had a doctor's appointment the same day that I had. And then all of a sudden she must have realised that her father might be working the same day she has to drive down and get Kim. Sorry, we have to drive down and get Kim because I, I have to sit next to her. And I, I had no problems with that, no qualms with that. Drive her down and pick her up. And then she can make her own way home by bus after her birthday party. No qualms with this because Kim is a beautiful person inside and out. And all of a sudden I become the subject of a yelling match. It's my fault. No, she didn't declare that. She didn't tell me that. She didn't say to me, it's, you know, she didn't say she was blaming me, but the attitude and the, and the tone and the voice. My daughter and my son are the only two people that give me any type of... ..help. That's what they get. I don't think anyone realises just how sick I am. <laughs> it's getting to me in here, in here, and I'm back. <laughs> I just, <laughs> and I just want you to.
personal, so I'm not at all suicidal. I don't feel suicidal at all, and I never will. I know that, and I have it now for a long time, <laughs> ever since my last stint at mental health. Thank God to them. <laughs> <laughs> I look so ugly when I cry, but I don't know. I just, I want to record. I just want to record this. I just, you know, I want to be able to go back when I'm well and look at this and say, look how sick I was and look how well I am now. Nothing, nothing is going to get in my way of this bariatric surgery. If I have to walk to the hospital that day, I will walk, I will hitchhike, I will do anything I have to do to get there, but nothing is gonna get in my way. You know, I can understand that she's angry because she's probably angry with herself different subject of course now but um she's angry with herself because she never thought about this until today but it's not my fault I don't deserve to be spoken to like that and I hate hate it because her and she, she, my daughter and my son are the only two that I feel that really love me I don't I don't get this emotion all the time from my husband. <laughs> I don't feel that he loves me all the time. You know, I've done something wrong and now we're not speaking with each other again. I don't know how long it's been between talking and not talking to each other. I haven't counted the days, but... I can't even eat. It's hard enough to drink. I went down to get a bottle of cordial because I can't even feed myself. You know, I had my really good days like yesterday and I cooked dinner. Sent my husband a text and said, why didn't you take dinner? And I haven't got anything back. Nothing. No texts back. And I can understand he was busy. But the oddest thing is this morning, and I don't know whether to blame it on the tablets or not, I've been trying to get my son to sleep on his own because we were planning on getting a house. I don't even know what, what's happening there anymore. Um, you know, I mean, I have to sign the bank to get to release the money. I don't know whether I want to do that anymore, but that's a different subject. My son, I've been trying to get him to sleep in his room by himself. He shares a room with my husband because, excuse me, I'm so sorry, um, <clears throat> because eventually he will have his own room. It will be a four-bedroom place. So I sleep in there. And this morning I get woken up. Well, I woke up to him coming in the room because he finishes shift as, he finishes his shift at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's a 12-hour shift type of thing. I can imagine how tired you are because I've done those shifts. I haven't worked 12-hour shifts, but I have done night shifts. So I know how grueling they can be on your body and how intolerable they can be on your body. So he comes in and I, I think I heard something like, oh, fuck off really softly and I thought nah it's no way because at this stage I didn't know really fully that he had the shits with me I just thought he was busy at work didn't respond to me to my text and it's bugged me all day I don't know whether it is the truth or what it is I don't know whether I heard it because of my medication because I have woken up and I've heard things um like sounds not I don't hear people talking to me, don't get me wrong, but, you know, like I've heard, um, I don't close my bedroom door fully, that's my bedroom door there. I don't close it fully because if Bambi wants to get out and get down and get a drink outside or eat a biscuits at night, she can. So sometimes with the breeze, because I leave the bathroom door open and a lovely breeze comes through there, especially in summer, 
air cures everything right so anyway i leave, I leave it open a bit and it might creak open or you know that type of sound i'm talking about i don't want you to think i'm talking voices because by no means am i talking voices and like i said i thought i heard oh fuck off in a real soft voice of course my son wouldn't have heard it and thank god he didn't say it loud enough because i don't know i don't think he would have um thing but just bear with me for one minute please i have been since this um since this video i've been wanting to have a drink I went down to get one because my sugar's full and i thought well i haven't eaten all day so, but it doesn't matter i haven't taken an inch on but i need to have a drink so just bear with me okay and I put some cordial in there sort of thing but I don't know I'm just so upset <laughs> but I'm just so distraught I don't know what to think I don't know what to do I'm just sick of this you know I still I still make appointments to do things with my daughter like go down and drive her best friend in the world best friend pick her up so she can get her nighttime hours up so she can finally get her license her peas i was going to so i make those commitments and she didn't care how long i stopped for you know it doesn't you know she would have driven for 15 minutes 20 minutes if i needed a break i would have had a break she would have pulled over and i could have stretched my back i could have slept in the car i could have put my not so much slept because I don't sleep with her driving. I actually think it's illegal to, to, to be in the car and sleeping while an L person is um, driving. But I push the chair back enough so my back doesn't ache. And then I have a pillow under my head. And I can see enough and I see quite clearly. But, um, you know, I said I'd do that. I commit myself. That's what the word is, commit myself. Now... I've written down days that my husband works and on that particular Thursday he was coming off a night shift. So when he first started, it was not a problem him dropping us at a school in the morning because now that I'm on Valium, I definitely can't drive. And I'm only on a quarter of a tablet. The, the full tablet's five milligrams, but I take a quarter now. I've slept all day today, but I've had very little pain, very little pain. But that's, that's the contradiction of having this type of tablet. It does make you sleep. It gives you lack of energy. I mean, I can, like I said, I cooked dinner the other night. I cooked in a crock pot. I got it all ready. I, I, I chopped up, I sat down, I chopped up the um, little round cabbages, Brussels sprouts. I got some oil in a bottle, well, the leftover garlic in a bottle. I tipped a bit of oil into it because I saw on YouTube that if you fry up type of thing with a little bit of olive oil, and they taste really great. And I burnt them slightly, but they didn't taste too bad. And then I had ready to go some frozen vegetables to, to steam. And Lauren was going to do that. So realistically, I the prep time was probably 10, 15 minutes. It wasn't long at all. Um, so I was quite proud of myself. But today is a really bad day. Um, I had the quarter and I will not take any more than a quarter for now on because it makes me so docile. It makes me feel like I have no energy on some days. So I won't take any more. Even though the doctor has prescribed 2.5 milligrams three times a day or anything up to 5 milligrams five times a day, um, three times a day, see what I mean? I will only take a quarter, that's it. It it helps with my back pain, dramatically it helps with my back pain. It probably reduces my back pain, if you know anything about pain scales, it probably reduces my, my pain down from a seven to a nine, right down to a one or a two, and that is a dramatic drop in pain. But the like I said, the consequence of taking a drug like this, it's a muscle relaxant which takes the pain away, but it also makes you tired and groggy. Um, 
concentration span, forget it. I'm amazed I'm still talking to you. I'm, I'm truly amazed I'm still talking to you because, and if I watch back this video, I'll probably notice that I'm slurring in some of it, whereas I don't think I'm slurring right now. So hang on a sec. You know, I've seen a lot of um, fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia um, warriors on YouTube. I haven't seen too many chronic back pain people. I don't know why. I don't know why. I saw one from years ago. It was a young lady. And it's a shame she stopped recording because she was, um, I would have loved to have followed her story. I hope she's okay. Um, you know, she was a rather thin lady. She wasn't anorexic by no means. She was well in proportion. She was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I'm going to put some glasses on because like Casey and I said, I feel like I'm going cross-eyed. And I also look at myself, whereas I should be looking at the lens. So don't ask me whether you can see my eyes. I'll probably look back at later on and realise what a dummy you are, Bettina, because yes, you can see your eyes in the video. But getting back to her, she's a lovely young lady. She was probably in her mid-30s at the time. This is going back about five years ago. Um, so since then, I've seen nothing on YouTube about um, chronic, well, I call it persistent pain because in 2018, that's what they call in the pain clinic. But because everyone else calls it chronic pain, I, call, I now call it persistent chronic back pain. So, and I've got um, prolapsed discs in my thoracic area and my lumbar area. And I went to my neurosurgeon on Wednesday, actually, and he said that there's no change in my condition. So I said, wow, because the change in my medication is tremendous. I mean, I feel so much more pain. Um, so I decided with, in line with my GP is I'm going to see a Dr. Ellison, um, Stevenson and she's a private neurosurgeon. I don't know how yet I'm going to afford her because there was an agreement with my husband that he would help pay for any help pay. And I mean, some of the money that was invested can be used for medical expenses, but I don't know whether that's going to go ahead anymore because we're not talking. So, um, anyway, I'm going to make an appointment to see her and um, she's going to refer me and I'm going to see what she reckons, what she says. And then if she says, look, it's not bad enough to have operation on, then that's fine. I'll live with this for the rest of my life. I'll suffer with this for the rest of my life. The good thing is that I'm having bariatric surgery, so at least I'll know that. The neurosurgeon has said to me that, yes, what will happen is with the weight, there'll be less pressure on the spine, less pressure on the discs. And I thought, wonderful. If it works, it will be a godsend. It will be a message from God himself saying, Bettina, you put the hard work in, you're losing the weight. It's a drastic measure. It is a drastic measure doing this type of operation. I think I've explained it before. It's taking two thirds of my stomach out and connecting the bottom part to the middle part of my bowel. So it's actually called a a bypass. Um, there is another part of the operation where you just get two thirds chopped out. But because I have been morbidly obese for most of my life, um, there's only been a couple of times where I haven't been overweight. Um, then the doctors recommended this type of surgery because it's uh, they say I'm going to lose 90% of my I, I'll lose 90% of my overweight um amount so for example if 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 it says that I should be around 70 or 80 80 kilos okay I'm 120 now so I should lose 90% of what's uh 80 90 110 I should lose 90%, so about 50 kilos, okay? 50 kilos. My head at the moment is not worth calculating. So 50 kilos. Um, but yeah, so I've got to go. Um, I feel exhausted. I've got my drink. I'm going to try and calm down. This does help by talking with someone. I don't know whether I'm going to actually put it up on my channel. Um... I think I strongly will. 
Um, and I know because I know that his family won't see any of this because I have. Um, it's only open to certain people, so um, his family would not even know about this, which is great. So I don't have to worry about um, about his family seeing how I speak about him. I don't mean anything. I don't mean to speak anything bad about my husband because he is my husband. But the thing is, and it, the thing is, he just. I can't. I can't at the moment. I will. I'll leave that for another. Vo I'll leave it for another video. I just wish. I think what we both need is marriage counselling. Um, but I don't think he'll be in for it. Um, I mean, I can suggest it, but maybe I'll hear the words that I heard this morning. Or maybe I'll see these signs again. Go away, go away, go away. Because he'll often go, mm, mm, like that to me. And I think it's got something to do with the culture as well. But I don't want to, you know, speak bad of any culture or anything like that. Because, you know, it, you can't do that these days. Okay. Take care, everyone. I hope you're not as bad as myself. <laughs> Take care and um, we'll chat again soon. Bye for now.